Hi, this is my second video about impact of electric field on a candle flame. So today we discuss the topic a little bit more in depth and also we measure some of electrical properties of a candle flame. So first of all, let me I show you the high voltage power supply. It's a little bit different design compared to what we had in the previous video. So here I use a bench power supply connected to a ZVS driver and the ZVS driver drives a flyback transformer. At the output, we have a DC voltage, which is connected to the electrode. Because we use a ZVS driver, so the ZVS driver basically means zero voltage switching. So whenever a MOSFET is switching, basically it creates some losses. However, if we do that switching at the moment that voltage across the MOSFET is zero, then the amount of loss that is produced because of this switching will be very small. So therefore, zero voltage switching is an efficient way of operating the system. And so I can run this high voltage power supply continuously. This is advantages compared to the previous power supply, which the MOSFET would get very hot. Okay, so here is the schematic. Now focus. So this is the bench power supply, maybe around 10, 12 volts, connect to the ZVS, this is DC. The ZVS has subcapacitance. The capacitance of the ZVS together with the primary inductance of the transformer, they create a resonant tank. And basically, we will have a sine wave. And this one, for my case, is 55 kilohertz. The flyback transformer amplifies the voltage. So we would get a high voltage. But inside the flyback transformer, we have some diodes. And basically, the voltage will be rectified. At first, I thought that the output voltage would be something like this like a single diode rectification. But when I measured it, actually the output voltage is almost DC with some very tiny ripple on top of it. So when I apply 10, 12 volt on the primary, I will get around 10 kilovolt at the output. And obviously if I increase the input voltage, I will get higher voltage at the output. So this is about the power supply. In the previous video, I said that basically inside a candle, we have both positive and negative charges. So when we apply electric field, the positive charges, they move in the direction of electric field. The negative charges, they move in the opposite direction. And because of that, uh, these charges, they feel a force because of electric field. And so we will have a wind in the left direction and also we will have a wind in the right direction. So let me, I focus first. Let me, I demonstrate the phenomena. Well, now the power supply is off. I turn it on. You notice that the candle flame is distorted. Now I can feel the wind. If I hold my hand here, I feel a warm wind. So that suggests that we have something here. And if I hold my hand there, also I feel a wind in the opposite side. However, what I notice is that the wind in this direction is stronger compared to wind in this direction. And also, if you look at the candle, you obviously notice that the flame is tilted toward this electrode. This electrode is a negative electrode, and this is the positive electrode. So the flame is tilted toward negative electrode. It means that maybe inside the flame, we have more positive charges. In reality, what happens is that we have positive ions, but the negative charges are consist of electrons and negative ions. And actually, there are more electrons, basically, inside the flame. So the electrons, they are very tiny. And also, they have very high mobility compared to ions. So as soon as we apply the electric field, the electrons will quickly move away. And because they are very small, they will not carry much of material with themselves. Later on, they will be attached to some um, air molecules, to oxygen, create some ions. But then they are outside the flame. So what happens is that as soon as we apply electric field, the electron basically they leave the flame, still the positive ions are inside and some negative ions. But generally there are more positive ions inside the flame. And because of that, the flame will have a total force toward this, this side, toward the negative electrode. So this is the reason why the flame tilt toward the negative electrode. All right, so now I'm going to do some a very dangerous experiment. Please do not do this yourself unless you want to meet your God or you are extremely experienced. So here I have a 
piece of metal. I'm going to bring this piece of metal close to the fire. So now that the charges, the positive charges, they are moving here. If I bring a conductor, the charges can flow through the conductor and we can eliminate whatever flow that is toward this side. So I touch only one electrode. If you by accident touch this electrode and touch that electrode, then you will be in very big trouble. So you notice that by bringing this sharp point to the flame, basically we change the fire that is happening. We change the flame. Actually, because we are injecting some ion into the flame, then the combustion of the flame will be impacted. And uh, maybe we can control the flame. And if we do it too much, we can also quench the flame. I become silent so that you can hear the fire. You notice that under this case, the discharges that you hear is very tiny. They are not very strong. Uh, but if I do the same experiment by bringing the sharp point from the positive electrode. You see that we have completely different uh, mechanism of discharges. So when the sharp point is connected to positive electrode, we have a different mechanism than when the sharp point is connected to the negative electrode. So I'm going to make a separate video explaining the differences between the positive and negative discharges. So as I explained, basically by applying the electric field, we can uh, change the combustion. Maybe we can improve the combustion of the flame. Uh, we can increase the temperature of the flame. Um, and if done properly, we can also quench the flame. So these are application of electric field on controlling the flame. You notice that the flame is almost gone. Another thing that I want to mention is that the amount of positive and negative charges inside the flame is actually very small. And uh, normally the flame of a candle uh, which is a low temperature flame, is not characterized as being plasma. So now the question is, what is plasma? How do we characterize it? Let's say here we have a cloud of ionized gas. If we apply a low frequency electric field, so when the electric field is in this direction, positive ions inside the cloud of ionized gas, they move here, negative ions, they move here. If the electric field direction reverses, the Positive ions, they move the other direction. Electrons and negative ions, they move the other direction. So basically, the ionized um, gas will react to the external electric field. Now, if we have very many of these charged particles, what happens is that because these charged particles are now separated due to the external electric field, themselves, they create an opposite electric field inside the cloud of ionized gas. This electric field that is created by this separation will cancel out the external electric field. Now, the length that the external electric field can penetrate through this cloud of ionized gas is called the by length. After this length, basically, the electric field becomes weaker, weaker, and eventually becomes zero. So, if this the by length, if this length is much smaller than the width of ionized gas, then we call this cloud of ionized gas as being plasma. Because the number of charge carrier inside uh, the candle flame is not very much, so usually we do not characterize it as plasma. Maybe we call it a weak plasma. So now what I'm going to do is to measure the conductivity of a candle flame. Actually, the conductivity is pretty small, and uh, that is an indication that we do not have many uh, charge carrier inside the candle flame. If you apply high voltage to a candle flame, it will conduct electricity and the spark basically will jump through the flame and goes from the other side. But in reality, the flame is, is not a good conductor. It's a very poor conductor. And I will demonstrate it to you. 
All right, so now I'm going to measure the conductivity of the candle flame. To do so, I have made these electrodes. Basically, the two pieces of metal, and I'm going to hold it like this, and the flame will be here. Each of them are one square centimeter, and uh, I'm going to place them approximately one centimeter apart. So we know the geometry, we can calculate the conductivity. First, we are going to measure the resistance, and then from there, we calculate the conductivity. So this is the circuitry that I'm going to use. I will apply, for example, 10 volts between these electrodes. So I know the voltage. And this is one of the electrodes. This is the other electrode. I place the flame in between. So whatever that it conducts, I can calculate the current. So if I have current, I have voltage. I can calculate the resistance between these two. And if I know the resistance, resistance is D divided by sigma A. So D is approximately one centimeter. A is approximately one centimeter square. And so I can calculate sigma. The conductivity is one over R multiplied 10 power minus two Siemens per meter. Uh, as a reference, I put some conductivity of uh, material, for example, distilled water is around 50 to 300 micro siemens per meter. Tap water is around 5 to 80 milli siemens per meter. Sea water is 5.5. And the flame, I could not find a good number on the internet, so I didn't put it here. We are going to measure it. Um, the copper, for example, is 5.8 10 power 7. Polyethylene is less than 10 power minus 15. So you can see that conductivity actually changes quite hugely from different material. So it's one parameter that has maybe 10 power 23, 10 power 24 degree of freedom or even more. All right, so let us measure the flame conductivity and also I will measure tap water conductivity with the same method to verify what we are doing. All right, so I have prepared the setup. These are the two electrodes. I apply 10 volts. I should make sure that it doesn't short circuit because the electrometer. So 10 volt is on. At this moment, we have zero current. Even if I touch the electrode, you notice that because the current can go through my hand, it's still 15 microamp passes through my body, through my hands, basically. Now I place this inside the flame. What we read is approximately something like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So depending on where I put inside the flame, because different position of the flame, they, it has different temperature, different um, charge concentration. But let's say it's something around 0 0.3, 0 0.5 microamp. It fluctuates. So 0 0.5 microamp. Okay. All right, so this will be the calculation. The resistance is basically voltage divided by current, so 10 volts divided by half a microamp. This gives us 20 mega ohm, and then 1 over R times 10 power minus 2 because of the electrogeometry that we used. So this is basically 1 over 5, so 5 goes up. So basically 5 times 10 power minus 6 Siemens per meter so this is the conductivity that we have measured so in this table actually the conductivity of flame will be 5 times 10 power minus 6 siemens per meter so if you notice you can see that the conductivity of a flame is actually much smaller than distilled water. If you have ultra pure water, that conductivity is 5.5 micro siemens per meter. So actually then this conductivity of candle flame that we measured is very similar to ultra pure water, which is quite not conductive. It's uh, just uh, almost insulator. Of course, a good insulator has an extremely small conductivity, but these are not good conductors, let's say. Now we repeat the experiment with tap water. Okay, so now I will measure the conductivity of tap water. Because the water is pretty conductive, I am not going to use this circuitry. I use this circuitry whenever the 
resistance of the test object is very large. So in this case, that one is not very large. We can use the ohmmeter of the multimeter basically. So here is the connection between the electrode one centimeter approximately. So this gives me around. 4.5 maybe around 5 kilo ohm. so for water i have 5 kilo ohm i can calculate the conductivity the conductivity of water is basically 1 over r time 10 power minus 2 5 kilo ohm time 10 power minus 2 this gives us 1 over 50 and that is 20 time 10 power minus 3 siemens per meter so i put this one here and basically this is the Results that we obtained 20 times 10 power minus 3, and on internet it says something between 5 to 80 times 10 power minus 3. So this one matches at least. This one obviously it fluctuates, depends on the type of the flame, depends on the temperature of the flame, the position where you put the electrodes, and uh, if the electrodes also get really hot, maybe themselves they can release electrons, and so the conductivity of the medium will change. So it's a little bit more complicated to say some fixed number but anyway we conclude that flame of a candle is very poor conductor of electricity even with this if we apply high voltage the flame will conduct the electricity all right so this is pretty much end of this video i hope that you learned something new and we see each other next time bye